Today, I'm excited. And why might you ask? I will tell you why. Because today we're talking GoldenEye, one of my favorite all-time Bond movies with one of my favorite all-time Bond cars. Zero gadgets, it doesn't fly through the air, and it doesn't go underwater. So what car am I talking about? Stay tuned to find out. Xenia on a top was a top prospect of Spectre before she met her untimely demise. We will discuss this and more in today's Bond Report. Hello guys, my name is Chris, AKA the Beard of Blofeld. If this is your first time here, I do put out a weekly video discussing James Bond related items. So if that's your thing, like it is mine, please consider following me on Instagram and I'll be sure to leave a link down in the description below. Okay, now that that's out of the way, Two coops from the same movie, zero gadgets on screen. And yet they both gained a massive following due to the reboot of the franchise and Pierce Brosnan's first outing as James Bond in the blockbuster smash, GoldenEye. Both cars were featured in the film. Both cars were made by Corgi. I've got the BMW Z3 driven by James Bond himself. And I've got the Ferrari F355 GTS driven by the psychotic Tempest herself. Xenia on a top. The movie chase scene between Xenia and Bond in Monte Carlo was just a cat and mouse back and forth foreplay on wheels. But that was between the DB5 and the Ferrari. And I did a recreation with Hot Wheels on my Instagram feed. I'll leave a link for that up here. But this is not the only European roadster in the movie. No, no, no. The BMW Z3. This was the introduction car to the partnership between the Bond franchise and BMW. Okay, we're gonna start off with this unboxing here. We're gonna start off with the Ferrari. Uh, again, this is a Corgi classic uh, from GoldenEye. Here's the back packaging. Side, other side. All right, let's go ahead and get into this thing. There we go. There she is. All right, let's figure out what we got here. One screw, let's get this out of here. to speed things up for you a little bit all right and we're out ah look at this beautiful thing that two-tone interior the doors do not open i was kind of bummed out about that thought at least the doors would open nothing there but uh great tampos all around great detailing on the vents there you know, wheels do spin freely and like i said you can see those disc brakes in there behind the spokes real rubber tires uh, you can see it says James Bond, Ferrari, F355. You've got the front plate here. Man, that paint job is good. They really did a good job on, on polishing this up. You got the gas cap molded in there. Like I said, you got that two-tone interior. We're gonna kind of dive a little bit deeper into that. I was a little disappointed there. My one tempo on the driver's side is crooked, I noticed. There you go, you can see the Ferrari logo actually on the steering wheel. There's those gauges again. And even in the back seat there, you get that brown detailing, silver shift knob, great taillight detail. There's your exhaust ports. I like how they do the detailed engine underneath as well. Now for the Z3. Here we go, guys. This was the Director's Cut Edition. This was one of my favorite series that Corgi put out. Uh, they did detailed figures with them, as you can see. I love the packaging. You can see the car had gold background. There's some detail back here. It gives a little bit, you know, talking about the, the Stinger missiles in the front. There's the figures. Not the best likeness. I'll let you guys read this here. You can pause that. There's the side of the box. Okay. Let's go ahead and see if we can't get this bad boy open. I did struggle a little bit here, but I went to an old trick, the butter knife. You get stuck on a box, guys. This is an easy way to open a package without tearing up your box. All right, let's slide them out here. There we go. It's got that gold foil in there. That did turn a lot of the plastic uh, gold on a lot of these models. You do get three of the Stinger missiles, so you lose one, you got a backup. And that's cool. You push down on the back of the headrest to launch the missiles. Let's get this out of here. All right, there she is. Whew, man, still looks great after all these years. This is the first time out of the box. No license plate detail on the front. The figures look really sharp. The tires spring free. Great detail on those rims. Solid job on the tampos. 
being a 136 skill, they are able to do a little bit more detailing. I don't know why Brosnan had light brown hair. This almost looks like Craig driving. <laughs> Uh, if he had a you know, Brosnan's haircut, but you can still see you know the BMW logo on the steering wheel. Uh, you know Natalia's dress is you know nice, perfectly matching for the screen. Again, it's just Brosnan's hair color was wrong. I, I don't know where they thought that was the appropriate color, but either way, you push down on these little black headrests, and you're going to see here that the port opens for the missiles. Bottoms, very mildly detailed. This is very up-to-date Corgi, minimal. They just spray the whole thing. Side vents. And I love that they do the exhaust. Just the tip, <laughs> just the tip is chrome. You got the Z3 badge here. Perfect shape. This is the skinnier first edition of the Z3, not to be confused with the second edition that came out, but let's go ahead and bring in the Ferrari and compare the two. So you can see here that the Ferrari is quite a bit smaller by comparison. Uh, if you were to try to transplant those figures, they would not fit remotely. But man, do they look good. They did a good job on these, I'll tell you what. I, I do wish the Ferrari was the same size, but regardless. In the display, in the boxes, you don't really notice it. I, again, the director's cuts, it, that's something they left out on the, the new ones. They did not put the figures in the brand new Corgis they released. There you go, you can kind of get a better feel for those rooms there. If you guys are enjoying the content today, do me a favor, please smash that like button for me. All right, let's get back to the cars. Which one are you picking, guys? Picking the Ferrari? Picking the BMW? Which one has your attention more? Like which one, if you don't own either one, which one would you want to go out and buy based off of seeing these details? Now what I've got here, this is a Johnny Lightning Z3 from GoldenEye. And I pulled this out just for scale, just to kind of give you guys an idea. The 136 is not that much bigger. Really don't see a size difference until you really, a major size difference I should say, until you jump to the 124th scale. And they are side by side. But yeah, like I said guys, which one are you picking? Let's go ahead and bring that 164th back in. Man, two killer roadsters, one classic Bond movie. What more could you ask for? Well, Chris, since you're asking, how about a head-to-head -head stats comparison to see who would win in a real race? You might be onto something, Chris. Let's get a picture of that Ferrari up here. Okay, ladies first. The F355 GTS is a mid-engine rear-wheel drive, six-speed manual V8 monster. It is a powerhouse vehicle, guys with 375 horsepower and 268 pounds of torque, weighing just shy of 3,000 pounds, which is really a fantastic power to weight ratio, uh, especially for a car like this. Ferrari really did create something special with this guy. And it could go from zero to 60 in 4.7 seconds, and it has a top speed of 183 miles an hour. Whew. All right, let's go ahead and put a picture of the BMW up here. Mr. Bond, you're up next. Now with the 1.9 liter four cylinder, paired with a five speed manual transmission, it cranks out 138 base wheel horsepower at a top speed of only 116 miles per hour. Now it does go zero to 60 in 8.3 seconds, so a little underwhelming. However, it does weigh quite a bit less than the Ferrari at just under 2,700 pounds. So we're talking almost a 300 pound difference. That's the difference between a passenger in the car, a fluffy, fluffy passenger in the car. <laughs> Personally, I wish we could go back and redo the opening chasing. The DB5 had not been in a film since Thunderball. That's a long time ago, guys. And maybe Bond used the Stinger missiles in the chase. Maybe he had to blow a tree up. Maybe he had to blow a rock up out of the way that had fallen because they were driving so crazy down the highway. You know, maybe we could have got a gadget or two out of that car. But we got the chase that we got. And it was a great chase scene, don't get me wrong. I, I really do love that scene. The DB5 really did shine, gadget free. But sometimes, you know, that's what you get. Ferrari, BMW, villain versus Bond. You can't go wrong with either one of these guys. Put them in the collection. I'm calling the winner today. Mm, drum roll, please. It's the Ferrari, guys. I have to. It's so pretty. It's so nice. And it's so unique from everything else Corgi put out. Who did you pick, guys? Was it the BMW? Was it the Ferrari? Z3? F355? You guys let me know down in the comments. 
Thanks so much for watching, and as always, Merry Christmas 007.